Welcome to Inside Out Boys with your host, Cody Bass. and welcome back to the channel big hello to all you new subscribers thanks for joining us here on the channel where we try and uh, have a bunch of good outboard fun and boat fun and that kind of thing and uh, sometimes other things but uh, mostly outboard stuff and fun and so I had to make a decision So I decided, uh, got that 30 horsepower Johnson uh, packed out of here. The owner's supposed to come pick it up. I got the little five and one half cutie um, all squared away over there. I'll get it in the tank at some point here. And uh, But I had to decide. I decided. I had to decide. So I, I decided. I, I decided. I had to decide. What I was going to bring in here, and uh, so I decided we would bring in one of these old seagull. British, from the UK, outboards. This one is, I think, what they call the uh, Silver Series, I think. And I'm, I know it's on there somewhere, but this thing is so... Frosty, we'll say, that it's going to take some scrubbing and cleaning, and uh, but I'll be the first thing. I don't know a whole lot about these things. I I have oh about three and a half of these. Um, I actually brought one back up in boxes right down there. Um, I parted out down there in Florida and shipped it up here because this one is missing parts 
the other one I got out there, the other two I got out there, they're for the most part complete. But this one has something on it that I understand is fairly rare. You don't come by them often, nor often, not not real often, not not the often. And I'll show you what that is. But the, you know, we'll have to get a fax check. Heck, I don't even know what the compression should be on one of these, but I mean it. It's just a little basic two-stroke engine. So, but looking at the size of that spark candle on that thing, I don't know if I have a compression fitting that that I can screw into it. But anyway, it feels like it has good compression, but we all been there before. You understand. But before I get to this little cutie, I received a package in the mail. I sure did. And so we're going to open that real quick. This is from a Mr. Alex and Lisa Willis in Connecticut. So I got a nice little package. So we're going to open it up and see what's in there. what we're going to do. Where's my other blade? You get to the There we go. There we go. these guys that you know do the perfect cuts this way and the perfect cuts that way that's just not me I'm a kid that never grew up remember how you open your packages on Christmas morning that's me that's me guilty oh I got a bunch of dull knives around here I need to get to work on Okay, right there, it says Mr. Alex Willis, and it's got a date. Let's see what we got. Oh my, oh. Wow. That's impressive. Very impressive. I got a place for this. I'll be right. Yep. That's where it's going. I've been wondering what I was going to place there, and now I know. <clears throat> well, Lisa and Alex, <clears throat> thank you so much. That is very impressive. Some definite skills there. And don't it look a lot better up there? I really like that. Thank you so much. I was all choked up. <clears throat> and uh, I do, do appreciate that. I really do. So thank you so much. Um, and uh, you subs can weigh in on that kind of talent, which is something I just don't have. You understand? But, um, okay, let me show you what we done drug in here. And it, like I said, I don't know a lot about these. Um, 
I've had a few over the years, but typically gave them away to somebody that wanted them. You know, they were just like, oh man, I want that. And I'll take it. <laughs> um, maybe I'm wrong. But I don't know. I, I did go on YouTube and uh, look around. Um, the information is a little sparse, but I, I found a couple websites. And, uh, you know, I, I think you can get parts for them, kind of, maybe. But, like I said, I, I parted one out in Florida, this exact same model. And I've got it sitting in two large flat rate USPS boxes. But now the thing does sound... Now I've got the carburetor off of it. I took that off a while back because the hose... So I sprayed this piece of paper towel with triflo. The hose that came from the tank, the tank was pretty rotten, but I still got it. But what makes this one a little... or at least an item on this one is this, the recoil. Most of these are wrap-around start, wrap-around pull. And this one has a good recoil starter. So that's why I kind of picked this one out. But, and, well, you got a big old spark plug. Everything's rusty. And uh, so we're going to start with a facts check. It's, it's my understanding these things aren't, may not be as near old as they look. I mean, this thing could be all the way up into the 80s, I think they made them. So I did read that depending on the serial number, some will have points, but they did um, have an electronic ignition system on there, which I'm hoping that's what this one does have. So I'm going to try and get that spark handle out of there. And we'll go from there and see if it does have spark. Now this is a plastic knob, so okay. And the spark plug is just really yucky and roached. But if I can Get it out, we can do us a sparky check. Then I'll clean it all up. Interesting. In interesting little motors. And they're super long. <laughs> they're really long. I'll put a little dielectric on that before I... Well, I guess I'll have to leave that off to get a... I don't know, though. It looks like I'm going to need a wrench to get that off of there. See if I have my big crusty old wrench on here to take that plug out. What about that big old fat spark plug? Excuse me, candle. Got a cobweb in there. There's, there's creepy crawlies probably in there. Dang, ain't that a wicked looking spark plug? How fat that thing is. But we're going to clean it up on my wire wheel here real quick. And just see. Let me get this thing all cleaned up and I'll be right back. Okay, I cleaned that candle up pretty good and uh, it's a Championis K8. Now I'm going to clean this wire tip up a little too because it's all rusty. It's all rusty, crusty, dusty. So we'll get that all shined up looking good. There. 
it's nice, pretty, brassy. Where's my little screw thing? And I'm gonna put just a smidgen of the dielectric on this thing because it's threaded and all that. There, just a little, little bit, just like that. Yeah, a little bitty, 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 bitty bit. That'll help this threaded screw cap thing. So I guess I put it on here. I guess I could use a spark chucker too, but I'm just gonna see if it fires off the block at all. There we go. There you go. Yeah, that screws on a lot better. So put it right up against the block there first and get me something to scrape up that block a little bit. Where's my rat? Where's my rat? Get out my rat. Rat tail file here. Just make some nice clean metal there. Oh, all right, she's rough. She's rough. Well, I'm gonna look in there and see if I see anything. Oh, wow, that thing's got good stuff. Check that out. You should be able to see it. It actually sparks really good. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Right there. Got good Sparky Sparky. So, what I'm going to do, I'm thinking, since we got some Sparky, and it feels like we got some Compression, I'm going to spray some Triflow down in there and just see if we get a pop. Now for all you newcomers that don't know, Tri-Flow is a lubricant that is also quite flammable. So it would be just about like you putting a mix in here. Probably about a, like a 24 to 1 mix is what Tri-Flow is. And uh, it makes for a good two-stroke two stroke starting fluid. And you don't have to worry about hurting your cylinders or nothing like that. You know. So that's why I use the Tri-Flow. You know what, I'm going to squirt a little bit in that intake hole too because we got that garbage radar off there. And we can do that. See, there's the, the garbage radar intake right there. So we'll put some in there. That's what TriFlow looks like. Superior lubricant. Okay. Danger! Extremely flammable! So... It makes us a good pop starter. Well, let me turn it down a little bit and I'm gonna pull that thing over and I just wanna see, okay, we got, we got a plug in there. Pardon me, we got a candle. We've got a uh, fuel. Well, let's see what happens, I don't know. She fired. She fired. And my uh, recoil device came off. Apparently, it's missing a screw there. There's a screw. I wonder if it goes in there. Interesting. Yeah, there's some, yeah. Well, yeah, there's a screw hole there and a screw hole there. And they, neither one of them got a screw in it. So this was just sitting on top of there. But hey, she popped. So? What does it mean? What does it mean? It means it went pop. 
this. I don't know if anything got in through that intake though. Try again, try again. This time I'll hold my hand on this thing. Oh yeah. So, we got some poppages. If you look down at the old exhaust hole, you might even be able to see a little bit of kaboom boom juice. Swathing out of there. It's frolicking out of there. It's frolicking out of there. So there had to be some poppage. I do believe there was some poppage. Or she could almost blow smoke rings and communicate with the angels of Outboard's past. Not for that. Um, so, interesting, huh? Well, I guess what I'll do next is get my flat rate boxes, make room on the bench. We'll open them up. I know I brought up a different gas tank that is brass. The gas tank that was on here, according to what I'm seeing, It looks brass. Somebody painted it brassy color, but you see the magnet? So it's not brass. It's rusty painted. But it still it does have the seagull gas cap. It's broke a little bit. Just a little. The screw is, but the gas cap's still good. So but it ain't brass. The one I brought up is the smaller, rounder type. And it is brass. So I guess my next step will be, I will probably take, take this bracket off too, and at least wire wheel it or something. But I, I don't even know if the other tank fits this bracket. But I can go out and look at my other seagull and see. And then I think, I'll get the boxes out, we'll see what kind of goodies are in there, in there, and then somewhere around here I have the original garbage raider that come off here. But I know in those boxes is the, the fuel hose on these things from the gas tank to the carburetor is a banjo fitting affair made out of a solid, like Bakelite hose or something like that. But I know that hose was an important piece to getting this thing ever run. And then I, I did bring up uh, a propeller, propeller key, spring, and all that. And I don't, I don't know how any of that goes on here. But this thing does have a gear. They, they do have a, a little gear shift right here. You can't see it over there, but see this rod here? And it moves the thing down at the bottom. And I'm going to call it the thing down at the bottom, because I don't know what it is. Throw out? I don't know. Okay, watch the thing down at the bottom. As I move the gear, it goes back and forth. So somehow that goes out, engages... I don't know what it is. I don't know how it works. But I, thought, I think there's a spring affair, too, that I got in that box. But it, it does... The mechanism seems to work. Don't know what that means, but anyway, we've got a learning curve. I'm just wondering, you know, it'll be interesting when I get this thing in the tank. What kind of water does these do they move? You know, interesting stuff. I'll be back.
Well, next step on this guy, I think, is uh, I'm going to get this bracket off here and everything and get my boxes up on the workbench and open them up and sort out this fuel tank. I think that's the the next reasonable step to take. But before I do that, I've got to clean off that workbench. I ain't got room to put a water bottle on that thing. I was digging through some of my drawers, getting some different tools sorted out and so forth and made a mess over here. So, I think I'll wrap this one up right here on this British Seagull. I don't know a lot about these motors, so we'll kind of figure out all the fun we can have with this together. That's what we're going to have to do. I do know there are some oddies, some weird stuff. There's a lot of stuff on here that I'll show you along the way, like this big chunk of rubber and stuff. I don't know what it does. But we'll figure it out. Can't be that hard, can it? So, that's going to be a wrap on this one. And as always, that's one more hack from Mother Kodiak. And thanks for watching. More vids are coming on Inside Outboards with your host, Cody Bass.